So obviously there are lots of places you can go to download models to 3D print. Thingiverse, My Mini Factory, Colts 3D, Pinshape, just to name a few. And uh, this time the, uh, the place that I've gone is actually just to Google. And what I did was I Googled for free SVGs of Spider-Man. And this is what I came up with. Into Google then, uh, SVG free, Spider-Man, something along those lines, that's what I found. I, uh, as you see, there's lots and lots of options there, but that's the one I chose. You can uh, search through to the page that it's there, and once you go into that, you'll see the license information for using the image. We're going to save that out just so that we can take that and load that up into Fusion 360. Within Fusion, you've got the option of inserting an SVG. Um, I know from experience, I actually needed to scale that up times four, but uh, it's quite simple. You select the plane that you want it to go into. Uh, I'm just deleting the square that's around it because I don't need that square. Now, my PC is quite old and, uh, and creaking, so what I'm doing here is selecting all of the parts. Uh, it takes a little while for it to catch up. The reason for doing that, I want to just select the red parts, but the easiest way to do that, because there's so many of them, is to select everything, and then deselect the white parts, the blue parts, and the black parts, and uh, we'll go on from there. So that's what I'm doing now, as you can see, is it's this is sped up considerably um, from, from what it actually was, but it, it did take a while. Once we've got all those parts isolated, so with just the red parts selected, what we want to do next is go and extrude them. And that literally turns them into a 3D shape. What I try to do when there's this many shapes is I try to organize them a little bit better. So I create a folder, um, call them red parts, red bits, and then take all of the parts that we've just created and drop them into that folder. and. Do the same again as you're going through the white parts and then the blue parts and then finally the black parts and you put them into the folders and it just makes it easier to manage, easier to um, group selections, etc. So you see we're, we're there, we've, we've done the blue. To, to select the black, essentially you're selecting everything. Uh, with one exception, and there's a little area down in the uh, the bottom corner that, uh, there, and there it is, uh, which is actually a hole straight through. So we deselect that, but everything else is selected, and we can extrude from there. See the. Final model there, there's all the different bits uh, pulled up. So what I've done there, you can see is I've got the, the base, which is black and the outline, and all of the other colors are raised up from there uh, by a different amount. Uh, I'm just, I just put it into the, uh, the rendering mode just so I could change the colors so you can see the effect there actually with the infusion. I think that looks quite effective, certainly on the screen, and certainly that's the way you could print it, and you would use the probably the least amount of material doing it that way. Once you've selected that, once you've done that, and then you select the whole image, and you can save that out as an as your SDL file. What what, we're, what I'm doing here is combining all of those different parts. Obviously, I changed them to different colours just for the purposes of showing on the video, um, but then to actually print it out. I want it all as one big solid object. So that's what I've done there. I've combined it and now I'm saving it out as an STL. So to actually make this print, I used Prusa Slicer Beta 
and uh, I believe it's now actually just been released, uh, the full 2.1. It's got a lot of extra functionality in there, uh, but what I was using was the, the colour print, um, which it basically allows you to pause at a particular level, swap the filament out, and then carry on printing in that, uh, in that different colour. And uh, you can see there that that's the kind of effect you get. Now, this used to be a separate web app, um, but now it's built into the, the functionality of Prusa Slicer, and I have to say, it was an absolute dream to use. Uh, a lot easier, a lot more uh, immediate kind of feedback on, on where, which layer you're gonna change at than, uh, than you used to have with the web app. So uh, really, really happy with, uh, with the way that came out. Once you're in Prusa Slicer, you can just drop your model in there. As you can see, there's easy tools for adjusting the orientation of the model. Um, now I'm just going to go straight in. I've got all my printer settings already set up, so I can just hit slice. What that gives me is the uh, the representation of exactly what the print finished print looks like. The slider there that you can see on the right side, you slide it up and down. That selects the layer that you are going to select for a color print filament change. Uh, in this case, you can see I just clicked on the plus sign to the right hand side and that's created one of those filament changes. And again, another one. And uh, you can see it's very easy to build up and you finish up with the, uh, the finished model but with the color changes in place which is visually represented within the Prusa Slicer which uh, works really well. So if you made it this far, thanks a lot for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this general content overall, then uh, please subscribe to the channel. I really would appreciate it. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.